Yes. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back. Thank you guys so much for tuning in this week. I have some awesome guests. I want you guys to go out and support. We have local artists from Casa Ortiz. Thank you so much for joining me, Nico. Let me turn this camera around. We're going live on my Facebook too. So if you guys are out there, watch on Facebook. If you have questions, ask below. We have artist, local artist Laura Thuron with, with the, um, with, I'm sorry, we have the Paradox. Paradox Immersive Art Gallery. Yes. And then we have Moy the Artist. Um, and you are kind of everywhere. You're like all over the place, the different galleries and stuff. And we're going to go on and deep dive into that right now, guys. we got lots of hearts. Awesome. <laughs> Showing some love already. So again, we're going to talk art today. We're going to talk about what inspires you guys, what influences y'all, um, what's going on, where it's happening, all that good stuff. But first, I do like to start off with a marketing question. As you guys know, I do work at Leo Marketing. We're a local full-service marketing agency here in central El Paso, Leo Marketing. We can help you with everything from brokering deals for TV, radio, billboard, print, and OTT at no cost to our clients to negotiate those deals. But I can also help you with social media, websites, video production, graphic design, photography, SEO, Google, branding, and more. Um, so I do like to start off asking all my guests a marketing question. What type of marketing works for you guys? Um, and do you have any tips or advice for business owners out there? Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess I'll go first. Um, I think what we do at Casa Ortiz... Uh, we really depend on the community, and uh, we do that by reaching out to artists. Um, I mean, we feature both of you guys at uh, the gallery, as well as many other artists, and um, everybody that comes brings their people. So yes. uh, we bring our audience, they bring their audience, and then we each come out ahead because everybody brings a little bit. So uh, we really depend on those grassroots connections. And what type of marketing do you guys do? Uh, so we do uh, some social media marketing. We run a little bit of ads, not not a whole lot. I think Lauda runs... I've seen her ads. They've gotten to me. <laughs> so they the work. That, she's the one that asked about the ads more. But for yeah. us, uh, and we really focus on uh, providing good content on our Instagram. Heavy on social media. Heavy on, we're posting all the time. And uh, again, uh, having so many artists involved, we don't have to try that hard to get content because everybody's already providing their own content. Right, so right. We just got to, you know, take the time, film what's going on, share what they're sharing, and uh, it's a big community, so everybody everybody contributes. And do you have any tips or advice for businesses out there right now? Um, I would say um, you'd maybe do a, you know, a multi-headed approach. Uh, of course, the digital uh, media is very, very important, but also, you know, make those personal connections with everybody. I mean, it's, for us, that's everything. And 100%. To this day, that's what I do all day. I'm around at all the coffee shops, so all the coffee shop people know me as well. Uh, and uh, I just try to talk to everybody. Go where your audience is, right? Exactly. I love and, and where people, you know, you are like them. So um, yes. I, I go where people are like me. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, Laura. What type of marketing have you done um, for your art in Paradox? Uh, and, and do you have any tips or advice for businesses out there? Well, I mean, mainly do uh, social media. Uh, I do post. Uh, I create events, promote the events, and boost my images as well. I pay ads. Mm -hmm. I do pay ads. I also do the old school stuff where I do invitations such as the yes! one I gave you. So and cool. uh, mail them out. I do that too as well. I have a newsletter on my email, so I send those out too. Uh, so I can be able to reach different audiences from all ages. I mean, yes. Some people prefer to get the physical invite. Right, right, Other right. Other people prefer the email invite. Other people just like to scroll through, through their social media. So I like to do stories as well. And then I also send press releases. And I reach out to the media, such as uh, the newspaper. Or like if you, you, I saw that you were doing this. Oh, yeah. I reach out to you. <laughs> And um, yeah, and try to invite people over as well. And then I also do a lot of the word of mouth, like oh, with, all my, with all my friends. Mm -hmm. I share my event and I tell them, hey, help me of course. share this event. And I do that a lot as well. So I love it. I cool. love it. I love that you're, you're doing different things to touch different people because everybody consumes the content differently, right? Mm -hmm. um, and do you have any tips or advice for business owners out there? Uh, just to not be afraid to reach out to the media or to do yeah. experiment. Uh, advertising with new things, uh, even just uh, like sending invitations or maybe just giving away. Like, uh, for example, my, my event is like with tickets, I give mm -hmm. away tickets to invite people over, and that also kind of like uh, 
whoever got the ticket, they're going to tell their friends that, that exactly. to go over with them. So it's kind of like a word of mouth where they can um, take people over and talk more about the event. And then also to practice their writing skills, to write their press releases and try to That's a good idea. kind of like do a bullet point of their main features of their event and never forget to mention any collaborators or whoever is uh, yeah. working with them. So. Perfect. And I love that you mentioned the stories too, because what I find on Annie's Adventures, I get a lot more views on my stories daily than I do my typical, my, my regular mm -hmm. feed post. Mm -hmm. And a lot, a lot of times it's people who don't currently follow me. Mm -hmm. So it leads them to my page to like my page mm -hmm. to see more of my regular content. So you definitely want to take advantage of those things. Then it's free to use that stuff. Yeah, so. yeah. Also on the story, you can tag other people yes. and then they can repost. And yes. That's how I'm glad you said that because I'm always telling you, and for all of you guys, if you have any events, businesses out there, you have any events or something you're trying to push, tag me so I can share them in my stories for you guys. And that's how you do it because you can't, you can't share a story unless you're tagged in it. So awesome. Thank yeah. you. All right. Moy, what type of marketing do you do? Um, and do you have any tips or advice for business owners out there? Social media as well. It's a, it's a big one. You know, mm -hmm. it's, what, it's what everybody's using right. all day, every day. So yep. that's where you want to be. Especially so, in this town. Yeah, a few paid ads uh, make a big difference. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to pay much. A few bucks, ten, twenty dollars, right. and really, it really reaches people. Um, networking, as Nico was saying, you know, getting to know the people that you're in business with, mm -hmm. by business with. I mean, look, we're all artists, like in our case, so right. you know, be around each other, support each other, and I think uh, advice for businesses is even though we're all trying to grow as a brand, uh, support everybody that you can because 100%. the more you support others, the happier you are to push your own, you know, not be greedy and we're, we're all trying to grow. So it, and what goes around area. comes around, right? When you're supporting them, they're supporting you. So we want to have as much love as possible. Yes. That's a good idea. I, um, nobody really says that, but it's true. We want to support each other, lift each other up. So awesome. Is there anything else we want to add to that? No. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Moy. All right, guys, so we're just going to go on and we'll start deep dive. We'll start on this side of the table with Casa Ortiz. Nico, let's yes. deep dive into the world of, that is Casa Ortiz. And you guys are located in Socorro. That's right. We're located at 10167 Socorro Road, uh, a couple blocks away from the Socorro Mission. Um, we're an art gallery uh, in a very historic building. Our building was built, uh, you know, it's, th there's a Texas historic plaque on the front, and it says, according to legend, this was built before <laughs> so 1800. Much. So it's a legendary location that yeah. we got. Uh, I mean, we got straw roofs. It's adobe. And uh, it's really great because I think it was maybe a building that was falling apart a little bit. And the property investors that, um, that own it, as well as, as uh, Hacienda Apodaca, where Laura is, uh, they put a lot of money into fixing it up and making it a really nice place. So now it's a place for uh, the public. It's a place for art. Um, we're trying to elevate uh, what we're doing here in El Paso. Uh, you know, a lot of people go out to Santa Fe or to Marfa for that type of experience. And, um, you know, we got some really cool stuff here. And dare I say, Casa Ortiz, I was just up in Santa Fe, love it, but they don't have a lot of buildings like Casa Ortiz up there. So. Oh, my gosh. And I ha I've got to tell you guys, like, honestly, I moved back in 2006, and I've been saying El Paso has so much talent in its little pinky. Just on art alone, the, the talent that we have here is freaking amazing. And it's so awesome to see, like, more of you guys out there and, and mm -hmm. getting the murals on the walls like mm -hmm. we got some ugly walls out there you know what yeah. i mean and we can really like beautify yeah. a lot of places if we just have some local 100%. artists go out there and and throw up what they do you know what i mean like and, and it's great to see you know so um and now it's moving on out to socorro which is awesome because for a while there wasn't a lot to do out there yeah you know we got the mission trail we mm -hmm. have san El elizario the historic art district out there mm -hmm. But this is a cool connection to that now. It's not a big gap in the middle, you right, know? Exactly. It's more what we're trying to do is make a, the Mission Trail just a long trail full of art and history. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, you know, again, with Casa Ortiz, it's kind of a mix of both. You get a historical building the same way you would with the, the Billy the Kid Jail or Socorro Mission or whatever, uh, and you'll have that crossing over with modern mm -hmm. art. And so um, for us, I mean, it's great. We had Lada move in, and she's doing really cool uh, immersive art as well. Um, you know, Moy's part of the family too. Mm -hmm. Featured him at a couple of different shows, honestly. And he's he's OG, OG. He's supporter. OG so, for real, <laughs> legit. You guys have to see not. his arms. I love it. And you can also <laughs> buy sticker packs at Proper Print Shop. Just saying, we'll get we'll yeah. get there. We'll get there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but um, so you guys, I've been to a few of your all's art shows. Mm -hmm. You guys have food trucks. Mm -hmm. We got like 
not just the art inside. We have live music. We uh -huh. also have burning of things. Yes, <laughs> we've done a few of those. Yes. Uh, uh, so one of our founding artists, uh, Brian Holt, also known as yes. Emberflow, uh, he's a really What's great up, sculpture uh, sculpturist, you know, I don't know the word for that. Sculptor. Yes. And uh, he made these, you know, big um, sculptures, you know, made out of wire. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he would he would put them on fire and they're made out of metal. So they would, you know, maintain their shape and their structure. Uh, meanwhile, you'd see this flame go through their heart. Yeah. And so that for him, that represents, you know, for him, he was a veteran. So, you know, that represents his experiences with people that he worked with and uh, his idea to let that uh, let that fire flow mm -hmm. and so uh, you know when we had our soft opening back in January uh, we opened it up with a, with a huge bonfire mm -hmm. using his sculpture and uh, it's great because a lot of people still remember that mm -hmm. exact event and um, what a great way to bring in a gallery seriously with, like with you will like remember yeah. a place when you set something on fire <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah uh -huh. the, the brain is going to recognize that you it's know? so cool and then you guys even work um, you have this it's it's and it's art art mm -hmm. is a is an onion man there's mm -hmm. so many different layer, layers and levels and and different types of art out there like you guys mm -hmm. have a group mm -hmm. movement um the mountain movement. the mountain movement dance yes. company as well mountain movement dance yeah. company and so which i've never seen yeah. before cops oh, artists that's awesome yeah. well that's what we try to do is bring everybody together and you know like i said i'm, I'm a face-to-face -face mm -hmm. party network guy you know <laughs> i'm like let me go to the bar let me go out to the coffee shops uh, let me see what's happening with everybody else. Sorry, just one second. Sure, We're gonna sure. fix that. Okay. All right. Sorry yeah, about that. but um, you know, I go out face to face, meet people, and I see Mountain Movement Dance Company at different events. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing them at um, at uh, where did I see them? At Dead Beach Brewery once. I, I saw them Dead do. Uh, I saw them do a, a, a awesome performance. And so I've been friends with them ever since. And you know, we invited them to hey, you know, come through. We'll get you for, for a performance. And then they danced around one of the buildings yeah. we had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we're not like pagans or nothing. No, but I know but what it sounds like. But, <laughs> but it, it's a, it's, it's cool. Like I said, it's, it's art on top of art. You right, know exactly. What I mean? Which you, uh -huh. you will not find anywhere else it's, in the city. A hundred percent. Um, and you guys have art shows all the time. Yeah, we have art shows. Um, usually every two weeks or once a month, we'll have different um, art shows. Some group shows, some solo shows. We'll have pop-ups, and so we're really just trying to get all types of different artists to come out. Awesome. Yeah. And and what's your your most recent show coming up that our, we want people to come show, check out? Uh, Francisco Delgado, who's another OG artist. Uh, he's also an instructor at EPCC. Uh, we're gonna have his opening this Friday. Um, this Friday, what's today? It's two days from now. Wednesday. I don't even know what day it is. Yeah. Today is Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday. Uh, the <laughs> fourth? Yeah, this, this Friday. First yeah. Fridays. First Fridays, we always got a new show going on. What's First Fridays? So First Fridays is, uh, you know, we, we get it featured in the Paso Times with uh, Samuel Gaitan. He always covers us. And uh, that's our idea to have a monthly event where we have a new opening every First Friday. And that's also what we're doing here with Laura. She's going to be having her grand opening yes, at Paradox this Friday. this Friday as well. So we got Francisco Delgado on our side of the road. And right across the street, no joke, uh, we got we got with Laura. Yeah, you guys well. are right across the street. Yeah, like literally. you don't have to go anywhere. <laughs> you just go from one gallery to the next. Uh -huh. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, and, and can you tell us some who are some of the artists that you guys carry? So we have five resident artists. And then we feature um, artists in our main gallery. So it's a big kind of hacienda type building. It's beautiful. Yeah, very beautiful. And um, it's we have a main gallery area, mm -hmm. and then we have individual rooms because mm -hmm. you could tell those are maybe the rooms people used to live in back in the day. Or the East family. That's probably what it's named after. And so um, there's myself. There's uh, we have Mario. Uh, he does printmaking. We also have uh, Gabe Marquez, who uh, has done a lot of murals around town. Really professional guy. Uh, we also have Diego Robot, who's, you know, a big name. Everybody knows him, and uh, I've seen his art in so many homes. So he's I part have of our one team. of his pieces. Yeah, too. You've got, you're a big supporter, I know that. And then we also have Caco, uh, Carolina Villarreal. Uh, so uh, all, all a group of young artists uh, doing cool stuff, and uh, we've featured over... I think 25 artists in the main gallery since we opened. We wow. It's been like half a year. So, I mean, we're really pushing as many That's people awesome. as we can out there. That's yeah. awesome. That's great. Be yeah. I mean, and you're, you're helping support the art community by doing that, by pushing uh -huh. and giving them a platform and stuff like that. I, so when mm -hmm. I moved back, I used to do art shows myself with my photography. Um, uh -huh. and, it, and it's just, it's awesome that you're helping give these artists the platforms to, to show their work, you know? Yeah. 
Definitely. It's important because, you know, when you're starting off as an artist, you don't necessarily know, hey, how am I going to make something this? happen? Mm-hmm. How do you know, how do I get into the scene? Sometimes mm-hmm. you feel excluded. That's I exactly I what I said. I was like, <laughs> I just moved back from Austin. I don't know anybody. How right. am I going to do this? Yeah. And it's it, it's a struggle. And, you know, I found my ways to get to, to make things happen and build things. Mm-hmm. Um, but we definitely do give that opportunity to new artists. Um, several of our artists that we've had for shows it was their first show ever. So they've never showed their art publicly, mm-hmm. and they had some really awesome stuff. Uh, we had this one guy, Luis Lozano. We had him in, in April. I mean, he's just really, really talented guy, and he'd never shown his stuff publicly. So uh, we were happy to have him. Cool. And at the same time, we do have very established artists that have been shown for decades. That's awesome. So a little bit of both. I love it. And, and can you tell us a little bit about your art since you're, while you're here? Yeah, so um, uh, I'm a multimedia artist, meaning I do a little bit of everything. Uh, I did study at UTEP uh, creative writing, so I got my master's there in creative writing, so that's where I'm trained in. However, what, I, what I'm most well known for is my visual art, which is um, giant abstract pictures, you know, so think uh, Jackson Pollock, think, you know, for those of you who know art history, the, uh, the New York school, I'm influenced by that, as well as Spanish art, spent some time out there, so I, I try to combine it. Um, and I also do stencils and, uh, you know, the ideas. Uh, behind my family's religion, Catholicism here in the borderland really influences what I do as well. So kind of a mix of those things all I coming together. I love it. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. And where, where are you guys located and how can we find you? Okay, so uh, our Instagram is the main place. Um, uh, Casa Ortiz 915 on Instagram. Uh, we'll be expanding all the rest of our social media soon, but that's where you'll get the daily content, most up-to-date everything. Uh, so that's the place to, to follow us for sure. Perfect. And what's your address? Uh, 10167 Socorro Road. We're right next to Three Missions Brewery. Yes. Uh, Dude, I'm telling you, yeah. you got a little like triangle here. <laughs> we got everything. Yeah, so it's you can come awesome. have a beer. Those guys are awesome. Good All you have to do is park the car. Yeah, just park. we got a lot of parking. We got like two acres of parking. Which is in rare in El Paso, <laughs> period. You guys yeah. have parking. Yeah, we got a huge lot in the back. That, yeah. you know, we got the farmland. Well, there's nothing planted, of course. Uh, <laughs> but it's there. <laughs> but it's there to park in. Uh, but yeah, if you if you forget you know, how to get there, just like a Three Missions Brewery, and we're, we're right next door. Perfect. Is yeah. there anything else we want to mention we missed? Um, I, th- I think that's it. We're also, I do want to shout out also, we're going to have a cigar night next Saturday, the 14th. Awesome. That's going to be my birthday, coincidentally. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and so uh, we're going to have uh, Las Hermanas uh, cigars coming out. Uh, Casa de Lumo is going to be running it. There are food trucks. So there's mm-hmm. smoked food. So we're going to have smoked food and Shout cigars. Out, and then we're going to have a... Smoked food and smoked cigars. Smoked cigars. I love yeah. it. <laughs> Smoke all day, you know? <laughs> and then we're going to have uh, also a jazz band, Footprints Come Play. So I this like weekend... music, y'all. Uh-huh. This is where it's at. You guys yeah. are looking for cool stuff to do. Get off your patooties and go do it. <laughs> That's right. You can be on, you can be on your patooties. <laughs> you can, yeah, go yeah. sit on your patooties in Socorro. In smoke, okay. a, smoke a cigar. Yeah. I love it. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate okay, it. Okay. Well, thank you so much. All right, Laura. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> So, I'm doing awesome. I'm excited for my opening. Yes. Opening. I've been working on it. I mean, I've been open already, but finally I'm doing the official opening event. And together with my the feature artist of the gallery, David Delgado, he also has a band called Dylan's Kiss, and he's going to be releasing his album the day of the event. Oh, so it's an album release too? Yes. Dang it. Dang it. You guys are like blowing me away. We got <laughs> an art show across the street. We got your craft fairs. Then we go to you. You got your art show. And then we have um, we have it all. We have like music. Mm-hmm. Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah, yeah. There's food. Mm-hmm. What do y'all wait? I, I know you guys already have plans for Friday, and that's going out to Socorro. So, h- how long have you been doing what you do, Laura? Because I've been, I've seen you, you in uh, the paradox, your paradox, um, immersive gallery for a few years now. Yes, I started with a project called Paradox Traveling Art. I mm-hmm. built it back in 2017 17. over at the El Paso Museum of Art. And I pretty much bought a bus from Craigslist. What? I purchased it from there, got it from Taos, and drove it all the way over here and refurbished it, converted it. And I had this um, goal and dream as an artist to create this gallery that could be accessible in areas that have limited or no access to art that I could take anywhere and create this environments, art environments, where people could become part of the art. So... Mm-hmm. At, in the beginning, I was thinking maybe I could build structures that could be kind of like a puzzle that I could assemble and disassemble. But after various attempts, I realized that it was very expensive. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, I saw this movement of like the 
the old school bus being converted into mobile homes, into food trucks, and all of that. And I'm, I said, oh, that's where my mobile environment is, my mobile art installation gallery. Mm -hmm. So I went ahead and looked it up on, on Craigslist and found one. And it was a whole adventure going over to Just to get your bus. Yeah. <laughs> so it was fun. So after that, I got it. And uh, I had been saving for a few years already to to start with the conversion of it, but then I also applied to a grant with the Museum and Cultural Affairs Department for the Artist Incubator Grant, mm -hmm. and I got it, and that was the last push that I needed to create an art installation. That's I, awesome. I had covered pretty much the, like, the, the construction part, the building it and everything, but uh, I, I was, the only thing that was holding me back, it was funding to actually make the art. Yeah. So yeah. with that grant, I got it, and uh, I was like, okay, now is the time. So That's awesome. I quit my job. I used to be the... You quit your job? Yes. And so you do this full-time? Yes, I do this full-time. You're a badass. <laughs> I used to be the director of a nonprofit organization called Amor Pro Juarez back in 2015 and 2016. And I quit my job to work 100% on refurbishing my bus and used up all my savings into it. I was actually saving that money to go get my master's degree but I was like no I'm just gonna do this let's see what happens <laughs> <laughs> I love it and you're then, gonna gamble on yourself I love it yeah like in the beginning I was terrified well, look, you like, gonna, look at you now girl <laughs> you got your own gallery you got two galleries <laughs> yeah that's yeah. awesome good so for you that, that's how I started so I pretty much took the leap took the risk and mm -hmm. I started reaching out to different people looking for sponsors I also opened up a fund where I fundraise money to be able to take this project for free to different areas and communities. And mm -hmm. I'm constantly applying to grants to, to have this project avail available for people right. that have no um, funding for art. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also do take it, uh, like we're hired at events and also at, at different schools that actually do have funding, like I offer them an accessible deal that is cheaper for them to, for me to take the gallery to their school mm -hmm. rather than taking all of their students out on a field trip. Right, right. So it, it, it works both ways. So I provide I'll also art workshops through it. I give artist talks and the kids sometimes in schools or different places get to see an, an immersive art installation for the first time. Yeah. And they're completely mind blown. I, I had one one uh, visitor, one little girl that went over and then she's like, oh, you know what? When I grow up, I want to work at Paradox Shallow Art. So, oh my that gosh, that's amazing. the best. Me too, when I grow up too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> when I grow up, I want to work there too. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh -huh. so, You're inspiring people. So little by little, you know, like, I think that's my my main goal as an artist, to like, make, make uh, old people feel like they belong in this place where... They become part of the art. They can express themselves freely and also feel welcome and dream and imagine and see how we can inspire each other. So I always try to like uh, stay accessible and open for collaborations. Like if any artist right now out, out there like has questions, hey, like what do I do? Whatever. Like I, I'm always open to give advice or even learn from, from sure. them because we don't know everything person, right each person i meet i learn something new like i feel like i learn something new and every day and That's also awesome. uh, it's how i get inspired My, i mainly get i wanted to ask you that community and i was gonna ask you what is what inspires you mainly that like i'm, I'm inspired by every single artist that, that i meet every single person that i meet like artists not artists everyone uh even just uh looking on, on how they interact with the art, I'm like, oh, wow, like, maybe we could do this, yeah. or maybe we could do that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm always, like, thinking about things like that, and then also working collaboratively with, with other artists, you know, how we support one another. I'm really happy that here in El Paso, we have this really strong artist community where where we help each other, you know? Mm -hmm. we, I'm, I'm like, hey, uh, Sometimes I'm not, like, I tell the guys at Casa Artis, hey, I need help uh, carrying some stuff. They actually <laughs> helped me install my Paradox Pyramid, like, from Casa Artis. They, That's awesome. They helped me get volunteers. Um, Brian, he, he helped a lot with building the structure when I barely moved over there. So, yeah, normally it takes me about, like, a month if it's by myself or with one more person to, to actually build the sculpture. 
But we, we knocked it down in like five days. Wow. So. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And then when I first exhibited, it was over in Chuck the Block back in 2018. And in there, I had like 10 volunteers and I had a lot of people helping me. So we, we assembled it in three days. So that was, that was pretty cool. Yeah. But, uh, but it was also an adventure, you know, even building it and taking it over there, you know, because that was the first time that I did how I started, like, my initial idea to create this piece that is an art installation that's kind of like a puzzle that could be assembled anywhere. Yeah. So that that was kind of like an extension of the bus, and it went back to, like, the original concept that I had. So okay. it was kind of like a dream come true. That's awesome. And uh, I also, like, I'm very happy that, that the city is providing opportunities to local artists to showcase their work and that they have this grant, like the Artist Incubator Grant, the Community Art, uh, what is it, Project Grant, which they help artists to provide workshops. So if I encourage everyone, like a starting artist, an emerging artist, to apply to these grants because it's like, for me and my personal experience, it has been very helpful. And we still, we need to be uh, keeping our eyes open to this type of opportunities because 100%. The, they're there and let's, let's apply. Utilize them, right? <laughs> and now I know you have, you're working on a structure now, a sculpture now. Oh yes, uh, I'm working with the city for with a pu- for a public art project. That's gonna be a piece that's gonna be installed over at the roundabout over at Country Club. Oh, fancy! Mm-hmm. Not and, watch uh, out, oh, girl. That's like a that's a <laughs> big spot there. Yeah. <laughs> that's like you know we got some money over there. Awesome! Uh-huh. I love it. So with recently, well, not recently. In the past few years, I've been collabor- I like to collaborate. Like I said, I get inspired by the community, and like I like to in my artwork, I like to highlight the voices of of the people in the community, and I look forward always to collaborate somehow. So a few years ago, I started collaborated with, collaborating with the EM Lab from Utah, mm-hmm. which is they're, they're in the electrical engineering department. So I started uh, focusing my artwork on combining concepts of art and science, mm-hmm. and together with them, uh, I create this optical illusion designs and patterns and installations. And then for this particular piece, like I... They they sent, like I use the coordinates of the of the location of the site location and we input it in their algorithm which is called spatially variant algorithm algorithm which is used to create photonic crystals that manipulate or redirect uh, signals and light mm-hmm. so we input that in the in the coordinates of the site in this algorithm and it create this abstract shape oh, so that's, that's so what the cool. piece is inspired on. And it's also inspired on the area. You, the river is right there. Uh, there's also a canal going in there, and water in the area is re- really important in, in the area. It's common to see people fishing mm-hmm. in there mm-hmm. or going for a walk in the nearby, uh, I think it's the Rio Grande, yeah. Rio Grande Park. Uh, I think it's what that is called. And uh, it's, it's really cool. And I like how, because I didn't know that, that that's how you find out. Because I don't know how to describe your images, you know what I mean? Um, but you just did it perfectly. So. <laughs> but I, I thought that's so fascinating that there's an algorithm that you that you get to to get your art. That's so neat. That's yes, fascinating. and the cool thing about this is that they have had worldwide recognition for this algorithm that they developed and they have done breakthrough research and then they're always uh, uh, thinking outside the box. Mm-hmm. So their mission is pretty much, well, our mission, because I work with it, uh, <laughs> but, you know, their mission is to um, change the two-dimensional thinking to three-dimensional thinking. So they put us an example, you know, the cell phone, the microchips are made thinking in a two-dimensional design. But what they do is that they started developing this 3D printing volume, volumetric uh, circuits that can change like the shape of the phone, you know? Like, we're, we're no longer restricted to anything flat. 
That's so awesome. it, like uh, they're focusing and rethinking everything and like imagine how the future is gonna be now whether our things are gonna be have different shapes you know so they reached out to me because they visited the paradox traveling art bus mm -hmm. back in 2017 and then they saw my installation which was uh, focused on the paradox design which is a series of straight line creating the illusion of curves and dimension so they they were like oh wow like this looks a lot like the patterns that come People out we're trying to do algorithms and we are looking into having an artist in here to collaborate and help us like uh, connect that bridge of art and science because we think it's important and to to continue to add on to that so like i went over i met with them they showed me all the things that they do and then i also gave them a presentation talking about art installations, mm -hmm. art processes, and everything. And that's how we started collaborating. That's awesome. We even did one art installation inside of the Paradox Traveling Art, um, mimicking the interior of a photonic crystal. So the, and the interior looks kind of like a bunch of geometric circular patterns. Uh, some people will say that it kind of look like animal prints similar to that but it represented all the little holes that are inside a photonic crystal so that are the ones that, that redirect the light and mm -hmm. the signal. Mm -hmm. So a photonic crystal is pretty much like a cube that has a bunch of little holes and that's how lights are being redirected. So we did that design and uh, we, we did that installation and then up to now we continue to work with the optical illusion patterns, which is kind of like what I have on the exterior of the bus. Mm -hmm. the, it's a design that has a hidden word. Oh. So sometimes people don't see it, and I'm like, hey, it's there. And they're like, oh, wow, like, I see it now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm doing that, and then uh, in, in the beginning of the year, I used to have a, this huge studio last year, which was a, around a 3,000 3, square foot studio. So, you know, like COVID happened and everything. And I was like, well, maybe like I shouldn't be here. Maybe I, I need to rethink things. Like sure. I need to do my art differently because what happened is that I couldn't take the bus out anymore. And for me as an artist, it's very important to always bring it out to the community. So that's when I heard that the guys over at Casa Ortiz were doing that gallery. And mm -hmm. I reached out to Diego and I told him, hey, like, is there anything else over there? Like I'm looking for a place where... I could just change, like, switch out the concept of my studio where instead of me just working on my art and taking the bus out, people could come over and check mm -hmm. it out and uh, talk to me, you know, like, kind of like a meet the artist and where also I could showcase my art pieces where people could purchase them. Mm -hmm. And then they said, you know what, like, there, there is a, a place, like, uh, over here across the street that, that might work. And I'm like, really? It's because... I need a space where I can actually install the permit, so I need a big lot. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, yeah. So the landlord like reached out to me and he told me everything about it, and I was like, "Wow, this is exactly what I was working looking for. This is mm -hmm. perfect." So like, I closed down my studio and moved over there. That's and cool. The initial idea was to just have the, my open studio. Uh, my art pieces hand in a room and then just the par the pyramid installed and the bus open. But I started open, that's how I started, right? Just with the pyramid. And then little by little, like people will be like, oh, so what else? What else? Oh, okay. <laughs> so, we want you know, more. <laughs> you know, so, you know, me being inspired by the community, like, okay, let's give them more. And that's, that's awesome. <laughs> and that's how... I, I opened up Paradox Immersive Art Gallery. Okay. So I started growing little by little, and then I invited the feature artist, David Delgado, who, as I mentioned before, he's also a musician that mm -hmm. has the band Dylan's yes, Kiss. Music. And uh, he does projections, uh, interactive projections. So the current piece that we're exhibiting, uh, it, we're projecting it on the one of the buildings of the Hacienda Podaca. And uh, it's larger than life, you know, people can go over and interact with it. The piece is called Synesthesico, and the concept of it is going behind the, the concept of synesthesia. You know, how people sometimes can 
taste, color, or smell sounds. So his piece features that concept. It's an abstract representation of that concept into the projection. So the projection interacts with sound, with movement. Wow. And it, it, it has five different scenes, and sometimes he keeps on adding more scenes. So when he's there, he's constantly, you know, editing and... So it's a new piece of art each time, kind uh, of. Yeah, yeah, a new piece of art or, like, a, an improved piece, you Yeah, know? But, but something different than what you will see, like, earlier. It's yes. not always going to yes, be the... I mean, it's always a new piece of art. It's ephemeral because each time a person interacts with it, the design changes. That's cool. So it depends how you move uh -huh. like this way, like, it captures that. And it, it, it's an so ephemeral, ongoing projection, interactive art piece that keeps on changing throughout the entire time that it's being exhibited and projected. So, yeah. And he also plays music, like he plays live music sets and there. So we're planning on having every single Friday a live music hmm. set where he's like actually playing like DJ music on top of like his oh, that's projection cool. and everything. And well, for the event, back to the event, we're, we're opening on August 6th. Uh, and it's gonna, we're going to be open from 8 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. And as I mentioned before, we're releasing his album that he has been, his single, I think it's a single album. And uh, it's a record and it's available for sale as well. And he's been working on, on these songs for the past two, three years. And you know, it's pretty cool that during the pandemic, uh, when it was, when everything was shut down, we, he went, he will go over to my studio and he recorded his video in there and somehow he, we end up collaborating, uh, me having, doing the design of the cover of his album. Oh, cool. So it also has my, my design in That's there. Awesome. And then one of the scenes of the projection uh, interacts, it creates this interference on the actual pattern that, that's the design of the cover. But all you see is just like a bunch of abstract colors that kind of like mimic your movement and your mm -hmm. silhouette. But it's the original piece is, is this interference of sound and visual uh, perceptions of the webcam that he has that creates this, this cool patterns with it. Awesome. So, Man, you guys have to go this <laughs> Friday. Doors open at 8. Live music, immersive art. Um, and you guys have like the only, what are they called? Because we don't have them, Sequoia cactus or what are they called? Uh, Sequoia, yeah, yes. Se Seguaro, yes. yeah. yeah. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> yeah, like the only one I've ever seen in El Paso. I didn't plant it. It's already there. <laughs> That's awesome, though. Like that itself is a piece of art in El Paso. You know what I mean? Um, it's a beautiful. Your 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 gallery is beautiful. Uh, the location is awesome. It's again right across the street from Casa Ortiz and um, Three Missions Brewery, um, and. You also have a restaurant coming in next to you guys. So, I mean, this whole area is bumping right now. Yeah, so the space where I'm at is called Hacienda Apodaca, and that's where I have my gallery, Paradox Immersive Art. So there's going to be a restaurant opening up soon there and also a coffee shop. So oh, cool. So the restaurant is called El Charlatan, and the coffee shop is called Café Coco. So they're both going to be doing a pop-up and they're going to be selling their food and their drinks oh, cool. uh, at the event okay. on the opening so people can start tasting and trying their food. The Perfect. El Charlatan uh, creates this cool mixture of this uh, ramen taqueria. So it's That's what I was gonna... Asian going yeah. to Mexican. You Whoa. Know? And uh, the cool thing is that he's also thinking like on how to like create the design of his restaurant where there's like this artsy transition in a way so that's awesome. adding on to the concept that we have the immersive yes. art gallery in my studio in there and then i i'm also doing one of his rooms in his restroom i'm gonna probably an art installation or a designer i'm not so sure yet but we're looking into constant co collaboration i love it uh the cafe coco uh they have delicious cold brew i think it's my favorite <laughs> So I, I can't nice. wait for when they're open so I can just get my coffee All fix on the regular, there. right? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Awesome. Be that cold brew. I love it. Yeah, and then they're also going to be um, selling beer and food sandwiches and that sort of deal. Okay. Uh, then there, we also have the, a theater there. 
which used to be the Socorro Theater, and that one is now called the Adobe, Adobe Moonlight Theater, and that's where the performances of the live music is going to be taking place. So the lineup is, is like this. First, uh, Siemba is going to play. And uh, she actually recorded the, her music video, like a, like a single oh, her music video inside of that theater. That's so awesome. there's this like really cool connection. In yeah. There. And then there's going to be Toots. Uh, the artist is Nicole and she has kind of like this dreamy pop kind of music. Okay. And then Villain's Kiss, uh, which is, they always put up like this really cool like light show and it's always like really immersive and it's more like a combining art performance with music and this kind of like alternative mix of like rock. I don't I, I don't know exactly how to describe it. Awesomeness? You, you have to yes. check it out. <laughs> I love you it. You have to go. I mean, the only thing that right now what we're doing like for the interior uh, spaces we do require a face mask yes. only on interior exhibits sure. and performances. The other big thing that we're doing in the opening is on building my new art installation piece, which is an interactive projection that showcases uh, geometric patterns that overlap with one another, uh, presenting the concept of moray, moray patterns which is combining art and science, but people can actually interact with the projections and move around the patterns that create this kind of like optical illusion designs. So I don't know if you ever seen some like when fabric overlaps, then mm -hmm. you see these weird lines and shapes yeah. and patterns that create. So that's what the projection okay. concept is about. So we're doing that. And awesome. yeah, right now I'm still working on the finishing touches of it and I love been it. working nonstop on that. And I'm very excited for this um this piece also like i'm planning on exhibiting it in in different places like the cool thing about projections is that it can be adapted into any space so i also have another event co coming up over in taos on september 19th that's right because you travel you're not just here in el paso you yeah. go all over so we're gonna set up that the same installation and perfectly aligned but another version of it over in Taos for their Paseo. Another event. version. So you want to even drive out to Taos to see something new. I love <laughs> it. Okay. Yeah, so pretty much that's what we're doing. And I right now when Nico said about his birthday, you know, like uh, my birthday is August August 7th. So I'm also celebrating. Oh, yeah, this birthday. weekend, yeah, right? Leo, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> come Leo, celebrate right? their birthdays, oh, guys, no. and come to their event. Support okay, local. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Um, and, and where are you guys located and how do we find you? We're located in the Socorro Mission Trail historic uh, district area. We're right across from Casa Ortiz and the Three Missions Brewery. And we're inside of Hacienda Podaca and the gallery kind of looks like this mystic desert mm -hmm. space where you, out of nowhere you see this pyramid and it creates this That's environment cool. that you're not really used to seeing here and, and in this area. Yeah. You know, you feel like, oh, did I go to somewhere else? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and then, well, also, like, like I said, right across the street, I encourage people to plan their visit to plan checking out the opening for the first Fridays of the Francisco de Dado exhibit and resident artist at Casa Ortiz to try out the delicious smoked eats from Casa de Humo, mm. which uh, they have veggie options. I mean, I'm a vegetarian, so each time they're there, I'm like, oh, they got something for everyone. I'm gonna get something. <laughs> and then we'll be here from, from Three Missions Brewery. Got everything, guys. We got food, art, music, beer, Psychedelic. What design. else do y'all want? What else do you guys want? Psychedelic designs. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. add designs in there. Um, I recommend for people easiest way just go to the brewery. It's easy to find. Have a beer and then go explore from there. Yes, yes, get yes. Get loose and then come to get. Have some fun. Art. Enjoy yeah. the night. And it starts at eight, right? Uh, well, we start around five. So you okay. Can come at five. So it's her. a whole thing. Yeah. It's all evening. Go so the whole evening, guys. Stay for three hours at the brewery. Go to you know Laura's thing or come to us. I mean, just make it a whole evening. You know, it's perfect. We got enough stuff going it's on. It's perfect. Yeah. Um, and you can find Laura on Instagram and Facebook. Yes, you can find me on on Instagram and, and Facebook as Duron Laura. I saw it. It was gonna go. <laughs> Okay. And then you can also follow the 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 gallery as Paradox Immersive Art. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Sorry about that. 
Okay. Anything else that we want to mention? We forgot to mention. I, I wanted to hear how you oh, guys you travel the often. I, and... I forgot to mention this. I'm What's taking that? the the bus on tour for the current exhibit right now, which is honoring the victims of the shooting of mm. Walmart, where people can unite together in this participatory art piece where people can write the message honoring the victims or a message of hope, an uplifting message That's awesome. uh, or message against gun violence and racism and also read through the messages of the community. I have been collecting these messages since I unveiled this art exhibit last year and on August 3rd. Uh, I'm going to be taking it to a school over, to two schools over in Favens, to uh, Favens Middle School and O'Donnell Intermediate, and where we're having a special event with the children there. About eight, 800 kids are going to write wow. their message in there. And then to awesome. close it up, uh, on on uh, August 26th, we're going to take that piece over to the EPCC Mission Campus. And that event is all open to the public, so everyone is invited to go check out the messages and write their own message. That's awesome. Which which campus? The Mission Campus? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because the tour is for the Socorro area. I got a, a grant from the Texas Commission on the Arts. These and, grants, guys, take up her advice. And uh, this this uh, grant was to 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 uh, take arts to an underserved served area sure. and it happened to be there where I'm at which is the Texas House District 75 which is all of Socorro, Haven, Green, mm -hmm. Horizon. And look at you guys building new art areas for yeah. everyone to enjoy in these areas. Every I day. love it. Every I day. love it. Right. I love Every, it. All the time. Yes. I mean, oh, I'm so excited. I'm excited for you, El Paso. If you haven't been, you are missing out. Um, it's a it's a real treat this area and I really hope that you guys go out this weekend and support these awesome artists and their events um, and then of course you can follow her on Facebook and Instagram to get more information on when her installations wh where they're gonna be when they're gonna be so that we can go and partake in those as well mm -hmm. awesome thank you all right Moy let's talk art <laughs> let's talk Moy art so <laughs> Like Nico said, you're OGEP. Like, I love your style of art. Um, I have, Thank you. yes, and, and we worked together, and how I met you was through the Chico Scavenger Hunt last summer. Yes. Um, and, and you donated some pieces for uh, the scavenger hunt so El Paso ones can go out and try to win. So I, I thank you for that. Um, same with Laura. Thank you so much. Um, I always appreciate whenever, you know, anybody, I'll, uh, whenever we can connect and, and help each other out, help the community out, shine the light on local businesses and artists, that's that's what I want to help. So um, tell me about your art. How long have you been doing it? What influences you? Where can we find you? I'll start. I'll take it way back. Um, mm -hmm. My dad started building a, a house there in Socorro in Moon City. In the neighborhood right Moon there. City. That's the first time I heard that <laughs> today here. <laughs> What is Moon City for everybody in El Paso who has no idea? Like, you know, I'm going to say 98% of El Paso doesn't know. It's a neighborhood in Socorro. And okay. it's, it's, it's just City. always been called Moon City because the main road there is Moon Road. And it comes into a dead end. And that dead end neighborhood area became known as, as Moon City. Okay. Which is where I grew up, one of the first houses there. Okay. My dad uh, built uh, the house with his own hands, with no real uh, construction experience. Damn. Uh, all he paid for was plumbing and electricity, but we built everything from ground up. That's so cool. So he, the first times I started seeing a, a good eye was with him. He's my biggest and oldest influence and in having straight lines. Uh, we'd build the wall, and if it wasn't straight to him, we'd knock it down, oh, man. rebuild it, the rafters on the roof. I mean, everything he had to have just precision, yes. precision. So I grew up with that kind of position, and my dad's always been a very crafty guy, so he would, you know, he's always had a lot of tools, so we'd build uh, giant bicycles with his welders, we'd build just anything that, that would keep me entertained and out of trouble when I was little. Sounds he, awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun with him, and then I... Like, Dad, I want this. Okay, let's make it. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much how it went. That's awesome. <laughs> and then I had a, a... I have several artists in the family. One of them, my, my uncle Lupe, lives in Horizon. He was a big influence in the fine art. So okay. I grew up making a lot of sculptures, doing a lot of stuff like that. And then my uncle started taking me under his wing with the fine arts. He's, he's an old school realism uh, oil painter. So I grew up, I would stay the weekends at his house all the time. And he has a son my age, El, El Güero, and you know, we got in trouble together, had fun <laughs> together. But I was always there also to look at my uncle Payne and take his classes. So growing up, 
I was always around art, whether with my dad, with my family. And then one day it's I just It's in the thought, blood. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think so. It runs in your veins. I love it. And, you know, I just started thinking maybe I could do this as, as, a, as a living, maybe get a job off of that. And I started looking at all these people, like a big influence was the Disney illustrators. You know, when you're little, you're sure. growing up. I got really interested in graphic design, so I decided to study graphic design at UTIP. And uh, it's something that I still do, a lot of local design, marketing, and stuff right, like right. that. And I enjoy, I realized all my art eventually goes back to my dad's education of being precise, which is, you know, marketing, as, as you well know, you know, logo design, everything, just straight lines. And so I started doing that, and then uh, I've been working as a draftsman and illustrator for a jewelry manufacturer here locally in the West Side. They make championship rings and class rings. It's all That's in-house. Cool. It's a factory where it starts with a drawing yeah. and ends with a tangible product. So I've been doing full-time illustration and drafting for them for 16 years now and it's a job that I, I really enjoyed because of the mathematics you know designing I mean everything has to be so precise the mm-hmm. 3d model anything the art the artist touches is exactly what's going to come out in gold but as much as I love doing that and it, I'm happy I have a full-time job in, in that but I really love uh, the fine art yeah you know, the, the painting the showing in galleries the meeting artists like Laura and Nico here, and everybody that works around them. It's just what really fills my heart mm-hmm. when it comes to, to the arts. Uh, and a lot of my mathematical side of art, you'll always see it back in my work. You, I could paint in a certain style, maybe rough, maybe loose, but the proportions will always be right. You know, uh, My eye always eventually goes back to the I proportion, keeping things straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And merchandise, I really enjoy making merchandise, stickers, patches, uh, shirt designs. That's something else that I, I've recently gotten uh, really into and really enjoy it and really pushing it around the city as well. Awesome. And how do how, where can people find some of your work? Uh, you will always find my work at El Paso's Finest at 314. I love that nice shop. Time. A huge shout out to El Paso's Finest also, by the way. Sorry, Moy. No just We got to let people know where... El Paso's Finest, they only carry stuff from local artists. If anybody asks me, where do I go? I'm out in from out of town, or I need to take an out of town or something, or whatever. Go to shop El Paso's Finest. And that's yeah. where they have Moy. Yeah, and I, I teach painting classes as well. They're drawing that's classes. Awesome. So we, we rotate different kind of classes there as well. Okay. You can find my merchandise at Gas Ortiz mm-hmm. with all the guys there. And you can now find some of my sticker packs as well at Proper Print Shop. And Yanda. Awesome. Great guy. Heck yeah. But... Yeah, that's pretty much, I mean, I just, I'm a creator. I like to make things, so I throw myself in my full-time job creating there all day. Uh, I throw myself in my fine art in the afternoons, uh, having my wife put up with my crazy lifestyle. She's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> She's got to love it, though. It's, yeah, it's, an artist, like, it's it's a fun life, lifestyle, for sure. Yeah, you know, we've been together 23 years, so she's, awesome. been, she's been seeing the... The late nights, the little yeah. sleep, all the, the work that all it the takes, hustle and, and it, it doesn't end. You know? Yeah, you could show every week, you could, but it just doesn't end, and it's just the way we create. And that's that's artists in general, like that's all you guys. It doesn't end. It just like I. That's the lifestyle. Yeah, you're dream, you're sleeping, and you wake up. You're like, oh my god, I need to draw this. Like you know what I mean. It, you have to create it when you feel it. So that that's something you guys can't turn off. Yeah, I even sleepwalk. Really? <laughs> I wake up sometimes in the middle and I'm like... Wow, that's awesome. I want to see that. Next time you do that, post it. I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to see no, this art. I wouldn't mind sleep drawing. That'd yeah, be I awesome. I wake up with a gallery ready. Right? Yeah. Right? Save some time? <laughs> awesome. Um, and do you have anything coming up? You guys, you have a couple of events coming up. We have a show at El Paso's Finest on August 14th. Yes. It's going to be Human and Nature show. And there's going to be several artists uh, having their work there. Photographers as well. And then in September, we're going to be celebrating the, the shop's fourth year anniversary. Exciting. So we're going to have, uh, Ruben there has several artists, so we're all going to be there having a show, uh, just kicking it together, inviting the public, having some yeah. things, making art. A great location, things. too. Like, it's a beautiful, it's in the Cortez building. It's a gorgeous building in the heart of downtown El Paso, right across the street from the San Jose, uh, San Jacinto Plaza. Uh, if you guys haven't been, please go check it out. And again, what are, the, so we have one in September and then again, August 14th? August 14th and then September. Perfect. Is there anything else we want to mention? What, what inspires you? Well, you said growing up in your father, your family, right? Yeah. I already, I already, I'm sorry. I was making sure I didn't miss anything. Um, is there anything else that we want to mention? You know, I, I would personally like to mention, like Laura was saying earlier, that 
It's just the inspiration from other artists. Mm -hmm. It's just, it, you know, seeing Laura, so I've been seeing Laura hustling. She's like, awesome. Serious hustle for, for a long time. Mm -hmm. and, that's inspiring, you know, that, that moves that moves you to, to want to push as well, to right. want to work, to not be lazy. Uh, Ruben, I have to thank him a lot as well for everything he does, proper print shop for the opportunities. That's our piece crew. I mean, everybody there, uh, from starting with Brian, with c Dubs, uh, Nico, Gabriel, Diego, I mean, they're just, it's a very different type of gallery. It's, it's very, you just feel at home, mm -hmm. you know, they, and the opportunity that, that they give to, to anybody and everybody. You know, I remember once Diego telling me, you know, I, I just want to give everybody the feeling that some of us have had the opportunity to feel. Yeah. He says, if they want to continue, great. If they don't, you know, it's on them. But I, I'd like to open those doors That's to give awesome. everybody that opportunity. Ruben from El Paso's Finest, another one that mm -hmm. you'll get high school students in to have shows with no commission taken just mm -hmm. to help them out. Much like the things that Ortiz does. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're really passionate both at Shopee Finest and at Casa. They're very passionate artists. Artists run gallery, so it, it really means a lot to everybody mm -hmm. else that shows and they're just such workers, such genuine people, all of them, and it, it's just beautiful to be part of it in my hometown. I love that. And, and what I also want to mention to that too is, you know, there are some places out there that will take pieces, uh, take a commission or charge for, you know, so there's there's some places out there that are helping the artists out by not doing those kind of things and, and, and helping the money go directly to the artists. Um, so that's that's really cool. And again, you said it was at um, Casa Ortiz, of course. We have Shop El Paso's Finest. And then at Proper Print Shop, people yes. can find your work. Awesome. And then, of course, follow him on Facebook and Instagram at? Uh, Instagram, it's Moy the Artist. On um, Facebook, it's Moises Garcia. Perfect. And this way you guys can catch up with all his different events that are upcoming, um, asking questions. All these artists do commission work, if you guys are looking. I know there's a lot of corona, uh, I call it COVID projects, like a lot of remodelings and stuff going on, and nothing brings a room to life better than art. So if you guys are looking for some awesome art, please check out these galleries. Go local as much as possible. Um, and su support art. Support our local art. Is there anything else that we want to mention, guys, that we have, that maybe we popped up that we forgot? Yeah, like, I would like to follow up with what you're saying. You know, each time uh, people purchase, let's say, some of my merchandise, my t-shirts, my my uh, posters or my art pieces, it goes back into supporting a gallery, mm -hmm. you know, is to... Same thing with, with uh, Casa Ortiz, you know, like, each time uh, people buy art from the local art, they all they are also supporting into keeping this project active. Yes. So it's also important that that we together as a community unite to also support this type of project. That way, it's not only the artists but also the being able to have this type of exhibits and and galleries available. It's it's really something cool and special that you guys are bringing. I mean, we have some art galleries. We've always had the El Paso Art, you know, Museum of Art and all these galleries but this is a different type of gallery setting um that you're not gonna find around town so i really want you guys to come and check it out um and and and, and like i always say just go local as much as possible you're keeping you're helping to keep the love in the community help make everything better and keep it longer so you guys there's nothing to do there's nothing to do well you got to go out and support these things that are popping up so that way they stay longer for us to enjoy. Because, you know, if we don't support them, then, you know, some things go away to the side. But that's not going to happen with you guys because you guys have amazing <laughs> spots. I'm telling you, like, I, I can only imagine the crowd that you guys have now. Because anytime I've gone, you guys get a good crowd. You know what I mean? So I'm sure they're reoccurring and bringing more people each time. And that's what we really want to do here is spread the words of these galleries to go out and support. I, I also want to invite everybody in El Paso to at least try it once. Yes. You know, at least it's kind of like camping. Yeah. You won't know if you like it unless you go. You exactly. can't say, no, I don't like camping, but you, you've never camped. Yeah. You know, go check it out, a place like Casa Ortiz is an awesome place to, to start checking out because if you're not really feeling a gallery, you have the brewery, you have Laura's mm -hmm. installations on the other side. I mean, you, you got to give it a Some shot. Mexican ramen? Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm excited, <laughs> man. And there was so much going on. We had a, a Frida show there, Blanca yes. and myself. Beautiful. And there was so many people that it was their first gallery. 
You're, they have never gone to that to a gallery wow. period. And, and to have and that as the it. first one, chef's yeah. kiss. So, you I know, just it. give it a shot. Y'all are inspiring started. people to go out and support the other art galleries and venues that we have, too, which is amazing, especially yeah. in these areas that aren't um, typically getting these opportunities for, for art installations mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Which used to be, like, all of El Paso, pretty right? much. Right, <laughs> I love it. So, we're bringing it more. And, uh, yeah, you know, we want to thank you also for having us, Annie. So oh, it's my pleasure. Appreciate you. you of know, course. It is about supporting the community, and I know that's what you're all about, so. 100%. You know, but it doesn't have, it can be fun. Supporting the community is fun. It is fun. You know, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's hard to go have a beer and look at some art and not have fun. So. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you. <laughs> awesome. Did we catch everything, guys? I think so. We got it all. Just come out. Oh, yeah, Nico's singing. Oh, Nico's got to sing. But before that, before that, just so you guys know, I do have some sponsorship opportunities here on the podcast. I will be unveiling my website soon. We have some advertisement opportunities for local businesses if you're wanting to get people to, you know, your eyes on, on your business that way. Also, if you're interested in being featured on Annie's Adventures, reach out to me. Um, and I have lots of opportunities, lots of openings, so we can go on and schedule that to highlight your business on Annie's Adventures. As always, go local and tell them I sent you. Take it away, Nico! And now the end is near, and so I face the final curtain. My friend, I'll make it clear, I'll state my case. Of which I'm certain I've lived a life that's full I traveled each and every highway And more, much more than this I did it my way Yes! Yes, go out and do it your way, El Paso Go local and tell him I sent you Thank you guys so much for coming out Thank you, thank you so much Alright